Hey everyone, Pablo here. I want to start off by saying thank you to everyone who has listened. And I want to thank all of my guests so far. This podcast is literally called This is Human because I want to learn from humans. We are all in our own struggle. We have all experienced our own challenges and we're all living our own life. And I believe that you can learn from every single person that you ever meet. And this is true to myself so far on this podcast. Every single guest has brought either a new fact or a new perspective for me to kind of sit down and think about and actually spread to all of my friends and family. So I want to thank everyone that has come on. I truly, truly, truly appreciate you. And without you guys, listeners and guests, this podcast wouldn't exist. Now, every now and then, periodically, I will share some of my own stories and experiences, and this is one of them. This is the Apple Bet. What is the Apple Bet? The Apple Bet was created by a crazy person that I know called, named Roberto Osborne. Now, Robbie is a psychopath. He is not to be trusted with anything which is why he is a nurse and actually he saves lives sometimes. But his crazy mind decided that one day he wanted to make a bet and that bet was on fantasy football. Now you have to understand something about our league in fantasy football. It's not a money league. You don't win money at the end of the year. Instead, what we usually do is create a weekly bet. So if I'm playing Robbie, we'll bet, you know, like a normal human being, we would bet wings or beer or whatever. One year, three years ago, Robbie decided that he wanted to bet the Apple bet. The Apple bet consists of going seven days in a row with only consuming apples as a solid. So basically, you can drink whatever you want, but if you're going to consume anything that is solid, it has to be an apple. Through some negotiations, we decided that you cannot eat apples as apple pie or apple sauce or apple anything else. It can only be apples. And the reason I did this is because I'm a very picky eater. And so if I lost, I would be very screwed. Because I would probably only eat apples. If Robbie lost, he would have an array of apple options. So I said, okay, if we're going to make this bet, let's make it as even as possible. Only apples. And sure enough, three years ago, I lost. Two years ago, we decided to modify the rules. And I said, you know what? No, because I suffered so much. I want you to suffer what I suffered, you know, the year before. Sure enough, I lost again. So that's two years where I only ate apples for a week. This year, I was beyond confident that I was going to win. So naturally, when Robbie tries to modify the rules again to expand the food options, I said, no, we are going to do this bet the way it started, only apples. And sure enough, I lost. So, I wanted to share with you what it's like to only eat apples for a week and what has actually turned into a seven-day fasting event. First of all, the first year that I lost, I tried to eat apples, but after two, three days, I couldn't eat apples anymore because the acidity of the apple. You would think that Red apples are not a, 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 contain as much acid, but they do. So I couldn't eat apples after two, three days, and so I decided to stop eating. Last year and this year, it has literally been me not eating for seven days in a row. Now, how do you prepare for this? You don't. The first year, I tried to eat as much as I could the day of the football games and, and, and all that good stuff. And it didn't really help. Last year, basically the same thing. Kind of ate as much as I could the, the last day before the games and everything else. And it didn't really help. So this year, 
because I was so confident, I didn't really eat that much. And again, didn't, didn't really matter. The first two days of not eating anything is psychologically perhaps the toughest uh, time period of not eating for seven days. You're constantly thinking that you want to eat simply because you cannot eat, just because you are not allowed to eat. After those two days, though, it becomes more of a physical challenge. Now, again, in the first two days, your stomach is grumbling. You are ready to eat. You look at food. You think of food. You look in the fridge. Even though you know you cannot eat, you are in those same habits of, hey, what can I eat? Where can I get my next meal? I'm hungry. Let me get something to eat. Now, again, this is mostly mental, psychological. On the third slash fourth day is when your body begins to say, hey, what the fuck are you doing? And withdrawals begin to hit hard. And so it's on the third or fourth day where you hit the apex. And the first year that I did this, I was literally in bed, little to no energy. I did not want to get up. I did not want to do anything. Um, it was just depressing. I was in a shit mood, could not do anything. This year, I was actually mentally, A, busy, and B, angry, because I literally thought that Robbie was going to lose this year. So the first two days that are normally a, a mental challenge were actually a little bit easier this year because I was busy at work, because I was angry at Robbie. I was angry at the world. Third, fourth day, it amplifies everything because that anger and the being upset in addition to your body starting to go through withdrawals is miserable. I was lucky this year though, because the first year and the second year I had kind of prolonged withdrawals where I would be tired. I wouldn't want to get out of bed, etc. This year, because I was busy and angry, my body just didn't really respond the way it probably wanted to until I hit that breaking point. And I believe it was on the third night where I couldn't sleep. My body was shaking. I was sweating. It was going through full withdrawal. And my body was begging for food, for sugar, for carbs, for protein, anything to put it out of its misery. It was a terrible, terrible night. However, and this is true for year one, two, and three. Once you hit that fifth day or after your peak withdrawals, it's pretty much smooth sailing. Your body becomes adapt and it finally breaks and says, okay, we're not going to be eating anything. So let's just pretend like food is not an option and food is not required and food just doesn't exist. Energy levels go up, your mood changes, you all of a sudden become relaxed, more like yourself. You're not angry, you're not sad, it, everything just brightens up, which is the opposite of the first couple of days, right? Your body stops grumbling, really. It, it, it's just, I don't know what the science behind it is, but your body becomes so much better on that fifth day. Again, I don't recommend this to anybody. I don't think anybody should go seven days without eating anything. But honestly, after that fifth day, I felt like going for a jog. And I felt like I could do anything that I would normally do when I'm eating, which is very surprising. Um, what does it really mean? I don't know. Um, 
but it's just something that I did not expect, especially year one, when I had a, a prolonged withdrawal session where I couldn't get out of bed. I had no energy. Next thing you know, you know, like a light switch, it just, everything goes back to normal and it's weird. Again, I don't recommend anyone to do this. My body is probably suffering. I don't know. All I know is that the third year in a row, I guess I've gone through it a lot smoother than normal than the previous two years, just because I already know what to expect. I already know that once I hit that day three slash four, it'll be the worst. And once I'm over that, it's smooth sailing. Now, today, as I'm recording this, I am on day six. So tomorrow night, I will be allowed to eat after the Sunday night football game. I don't really crave food right now other than thinking of food. So if I see a commercial for wings, if I see a billboard for, you know, a sandwich or whatever it may be, I'll think of it. And I'm like, damn, that would be so good. But then it's gone, right? It's not me dwelling on, man, I really need food. I want food. No, it's, it's the weirdest thing. Um, now with all of that being said, I have consumed liquids. I am allowed to consume liquids, no protein shakes, no food replacement shakes or anything like that. I'm allowed soda, water, beer, any sort of alcohol, juice. So if I want to go buy a Tropicana, you know, orange juice, I can do that. That's not, not a problem. What I would recommend to anyone who hates themselves enough to try this is Gatorade and body armor are your friends. Your body will start to cramp up from not getting any nutrients or real nutrients. So Gatorade has the electrolytes, the vitamins, or at least body armor does. And the other thing is to just be mentally prepared to physically suffer because like I said, those first couple of days, you're, you're, you're just thinking about food, your stomach is grumbling. Um, and then it slowly transitions into, Hey, my body is actually uncomfortable and it is freaking out again. Don't recommend it, but whew, if you got to do it, that, that, that's, that's how I, I got through it. A lot of lattes, I would go to Starbucks and get uh, a mocha frappe, of mocha something. I don't know. It's basically hot chocolate milk with coffee. And I would literally get as, you know, whole milk to have as many nutrients as possible. And every now and then I would get a soda just to get a little bit of a sugar rush for more energy. But again, if I didn't have the soda and if I didn't have anything else, I think I would be okay. Because after that peak, your body doesn't, it, it just adapts to not getting that food. Now, do you lose weight when you do this? This year, I didn't weigh myself because I was, I, I didn't want to get fit, uh, mentally drained. That first year and even last year, I weighed myself every day to see what the changes were. I would lose anywhere from seven to 10 pounds in that week. This year, I didn't want to do that because I remember looking and keeping track of that weight and becoming depressed. If you don't know me, I am not the biggest person in the world. I run a lot. So gaining weight is not very easy for me. I run so that I can continue eating pizza and junk food. This week, I have not ran, I have not done anything, and I know for a fact that I've lost at least five to 10 pounds. So just, I already know that it's there, so I haven't kept track of it, and I don't want to. I don't want to be depressed. Um, but yeah, so that is my adventure. That is my piece of knowledge I will share to the world today. Not eating for seven days, do not recommend it. Will you lose weight? Yes. Will you be miserable? Yes. Do I recommend it? No. Should you do it? 
Probably not. Maybe I can find a nutritionist or a doctor that can break it down a little bit more scientifically and biologically on what is happening and why I'm suffering and why certain things happen to the body when you don't eat for seven days and why you feel better after a few days. I don't know, um, but that's my piece of uh, ex human experience. And uh, again, I want to thank everyone for listening and I want to thank everyone who has come on. Periodically, I will give my own little experiences and opinions. And this is the one for me today. So again, thank you everyone. And please eat and eat an extra wing for me because I am really craving it now that I talked about wings. Bye everyone. Bye.